Hi, everybody. We are here once again for another edition of Guru Talks podcast for the World Meets in Bali. So we are very excited about today's uh, edition. This is a very special day for us. We are going to do a lot of events, parties, fashion shows, launching of our web page, and the most beautiful reason that we are all here today, <laughs> Jane Hitchcock. Hi, Hello, Jane. Jane. How are you? Hi. Thank you for coming. Hello, everybody. You Thank look you stunning. Look Jane at this. Jane is beautiful. Wow. Jane is beautiful. Oh, by the way, my name is Ana Luisa. Sorry, I always forget to introduce myself. <laughs> She's the star of the show. <laughs> Not the star of the show. With me, I have Francisco Oliveira. Hi, Hello. gorgeous oh. man. Hello, gorgeous woman. I love your jewelry. Yes, it's beautiful. It's I wear it every day. Every day I walk <laughs> up the street with this, but actually, it's Ana Michela. A jewelry, a healing, and yes. I have a bracelet, <coughs> and you as well, yeah? Yeah, we are all dressed oh, today with the representations quite, yeah. from the, the, the amazing designers that we have in Bali that we are also going to represent in our uh, e-commerce page. We have these beautiful silks from Quarzia, and we also have the beautiful jewelry from Anna Michelin. So, let's start with the beginning. Let's start with Jane. Jane, Jane <laughs> is a fashion icon, if you don't know, I'm, it's difficult for you not to know, but Jane Hitchcock is a fashion icon. She stands for a period of glamour, the 60s and the 70s. And she's an American beauty, and she's done it all. She was with the best photographers, she was with the best creative designers, and now she's with us at Guru Shangri. So thank you, Jane, once again for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You are sweetheart. Thank you for coming. I'm happy to be here. So first question, uh, first yes. question, let's jump a little bit uh, from here to the past, let's jump for the 60s and let's jump to the hustle and bustle of New York. And New York has the pleasure of receiving this beautiful young girl when she was just 14 years old. Just freshly come from Alabama to try <laughs> her luck at ballet. Right, Jane? Can you tell us yeah. how was this, this, uh, this situation in your life because you were a dancer in the beginning when you were very young. Well, actually the New York City Ballet brought me to New York to, to be a trainee for the company. Mm -hmm. So um, while I was there studying and preparing, uh, photographers kept stopping me on the street and they kept saying, you should be a model. Of course I walked like a, you know, when they saw me crossing the street and walking like a dancer. So it was like, oh, because this was the late 60s. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, style and posing and graphics was very sure. big then. Mm -hmm. So um, this ballet dancer, male ballet dancer, took me to a studio and said, well you have to get pictures if you want to be a model. I said, okay. So I went to this catalog studio, which is like the worst, lowest, horrible <laughs> photography. But she said, do you have eyelashes? I said, no. Do you have wigs? I said, no. Wow. Well, do you have an agent? And I said, no. Because you had just arrived. Because I just arrived. And you were and, just 14. And I was just 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like in the studio trying to get them to do it. She says, well, let me call Wilhelmina. So she called an agent, Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina who was like now. the biggest yeah, model in the world for 20 years. She had like 150 Vogue she covers. Germany, she and she was retired and she started an agency in New York. So she, she was just starting. So she. She took me, I was her fifth model, mm -hmm. and um, sent me out to photographers and immediately I was working, like straight away, I was working every day and I went to professional school, so I quit school, I stopped going to school, I just worked and had fun and played. <laughs> so no ballet anymore? No ballet, although I heard they cried when I quit. So you were good at the Let's go there. You were good in what you did with the ballet. You, oh, yeah. you loved it, yeah? I was like one of two girls in all of America that they that was took, chosen to go that there. That was chosen to go there to the school. So it was your decision. It was a scholarship. It was your decision once you were young. It was like your father and mother's idea. Well, I don't know. They started me at like six or seven, not that young, which is good. And then I wanted to quit at seven or I, didn't want that. And my mother didn't let me, so yeah. I just kept going. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was something good for me to do. I mean, you were good. I was very good. Yeah, I was good, and uh, I loved it. I was outstanding. Obviously, they wouldn't have taken me to New York City from Alabama if it wasn't. Of course, of course. <laughs> and those times, uh, there was 
the market was very small, right? So when they choose, it was really the creme de la creme. Yeah, I had the long arms, the long, the arched feet, the long legs. You know, I had it. You had all the features that needed to... I had everything for the ballet and I loved it and I, I, I stood out. I so how was your experience, I'll go to the, the other question. You are 14. Mm -hmm. That's when you start to, you know, realize a lot of stuff in your body and reality. It's and when we change, men and, and girls, yeah? Girls are a little bit younger, but how you felt being 14 years old and you had the center of attention? Yeah? yeah? Because people are saying, you are stunning, you are beautiful. How was this building up in your, I would say, personality? Well, I love it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> when people say you are beautiful every day, yeah. it's just, okay, thank you. It's great. I mean, a girl, 14-year-old girl from Alabama in a, in a photography studio of the biggest photographer in the world yeah. and the best hairdresser in the world, yeah. pruning you know, over you telling you how fabulous you are and you come from Alabama, you're 14 and you middle class, you know, no hope of anything in Alabama and now you're in New York. And suddenly you are the center of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, and, but I was a performer because I was a dancer. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was performing. So you were, okay. As a dancer. It's like an art form. Yeah, it's an art form. Yes, modeling is an art. Art form. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you understand the lighting, you understand the structure of, of your movement, of your arms. You understand your position. I understand my position. So as a ballerina, that's what I, I uh, trained. Mm -hmm. So when it went into modeling, it was an extension of that. And for me, it was just, you know. Easy. It was Easy. perfect. I loved it. It was it was, you know, like... It so was one of the best performing. times in your life, yeah? Yeah, like, yeah. I was got to be a performer, okay, I wasn't dancing, but still, I had different costumes. I had my hair and my makeup, you know, and I had fun in the dressing room, you know, with fantastic And all this amazing uh, how you uh, photography. How you start to be, just in the same question, see yourself in the magazines or walking on the street and suddenly you're on the cover of Vogue with, with your age? You, you was like that immediately? Pretty much, yeah. And how you saw yourself, like walking on the street, the girl from Alabama, and suddenly you are on the cover of the magazine, and everybody's seeing I, you, yeah? I, I think I commanded my space, you know, I was a ballerina. I had, it was just natural. I had, yeah, I had wow. presence, that was what dancing so was beautiful. about, so mm -hmm. it was comportment, and and uh, yeah, it was about comportment and, mm -hmm. and, and performance. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was performing the whole time. Wow. <laughs> and that's, it, it, we can say it was meant to be. And uh, also, mm -hmm. I, I was very uh, impressed because we heard also these amazing photographers like Avedon, Elmont Newton, Guy Bourdin, and they were all shooting you. So this was also cause a, a great, massive impact in your parents and this brings us to the next mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. so how because your parents sent you to Alabama for a ballet school yeah. <laughs> and suddenly you were in the cover of Vogue, Arpa Bazaar and all these amazing creative designers and photographers how did they took it uh, did they respond it well yes, they were afraid yes. of it how, no, how no. did it happen no my mother was very supportive she had wanted to be a singer when she was young and her mother wouldn't let Runs her. Runs in the family. Then. So <laughs> she, she was very supportive of me in every way. She went to New York with me when I was 15 and 14 so and lived with me. Process. Yeah, And my dad stayed home, but he was so proud of me. He used to go around everywhere sh to all the friends and, and show, the show my <laughs> magazines, look at my daughter. He was a farmer. He was a cotton farmer and had plantations. Okay. He was actually 55 when I was born. Okay. So wow. he was born turn of the century and he had, had lived down south in Enterprise, Alabama and had cotton farms. But they got uh, bankrupt by the boll weevil because they were, the boll weevil was an insect. Okay. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't all have the destroy the cups. They didn't have the sides in that space. So he had to move you know, to the, I was born exactly, the my father had the same age difference, 54, uh, he was, I was born in 50, he was 54. Yeah. So I understand the kind of, he's like a grandfather father. Right, it's like a grandfather, that's what people thought I was. So, uh, you are now 
just you, we go through a little bit your childhood a little bit you you understand your father and mother supported you through the process you have these dancing classes you arrived in New York and you see it from this perspective when you are like 14 years old you feel that being uh, exposed the way you were so young just could somehow affect your innocence as a young girl or in, in a sense in the sense of being naive still understanding the world because it's a very tough world fashion and yeah? it's not mm -hmm. easy yeah? there's a lot of um, fashion there's in our days you see there is a lot of pressure in models it so wasn't like that in those, in those days, days not no, like it was much so tell more me about simple. that exactly no no it was a profession i okay. i had a career and a professional i had to arrive on time mm -hmm. uh, and everything was the photographers had to answer to Eileen Ford and Wilhelmina, the two top agents. agents. Who, Wilhelmina had been a model, and it had been uh, mm -hmm. she had been very professional. And Eileen watched everybody like a hawk. She she would cut you down, and you know, like she knew all the photographers and everybody what they were doing. And if she sent a model to them and they didn't behave, boy, they that can, was wrong. Okay. She would get the they would get the axe. So. <laughs> We were very well protected in those Beautiful. days. Beautiful. And it, I didn't have any trouble and mm -hmm. at all, ever. Well, no, it was, for me it was just a, a, a job, a professional. I did a, you know, professional. And you had also a uh, Time magazine, did an article on you, right? Yeah, a very big article, Wilhelmina. That's when I was with Wilhelmina in the beginning, and it was the story of the making of a model. You know, how at 14 I had been brought to New York and how I had become a top success and that was such an impactful article it went all around the world it was time magazine and i could work then after that in any country in the world wow. at four, 14. 14. wow Just yeah for that. i went to paris i went to italy um how I was did, that with 14. yeah i did the french collections at 15 with with uh, guy bordin your favorite love. and Absolutely david adorable. bailey mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I worked in Milano. I was the first American model to work there, actually. They had only had models from Spain in those days. Mm. Okay. But, uh, this I, is what, 60s again, yeah? 1969, 69. 70. Okay. 70. The, the beginning the of the 70s. Yeah, but uh, they didn't have a runway. It was not like there that. Was there not was no so runway. So you did the cat, you did the catwalk same. Mm, was no? no, there was no runway. Sh yes. There was no. Just no, photography. Just photography. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until about the 80s that the runways started to catch on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was big like late 60s, mm -hmm. all through the 70s. Mm -hmm. No runway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, interesting because it brings me also to the next question. Um, so this period, it's full of creativity. Yes, it's a very... You have amazing creatives throughout art, painting, you have the School of Bauhaus, you have Helmut Newton, you have this amazing creative. The fashion creative. was the fashion wild. just wild. A, yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. And uh, the role of woman also changed. The way we perceived woman those times also changed. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, it, it really strikes me as very interesting because you you live this moment before uh, a woman was portrayed as the housewife yeah always right. cooking and baking oh, suddenly yeah. you have this strong powerful woman with this beautiful clothing with this amazing posters just being shot with this these great photographers true i'm sure you loved it oh i did <laughs> i loved it but it was an art form for me you know mm -hmm. um i mean i was it was a time of graphism, you know, in mm -hmm. the late 60s, early 70s, things were graphic. So I was using my body and my, everything I'd learned in dance to, to work. Of course. And that's also what made me a good model and why photographers liked working with me. What was your favorite yeah. photographer? Yeah. Well, Hero was my favorite. His name is not as famous as some of them, but he was very, very big in, in, at the same time as Avedon and Alma mm -hmm. Newton. Because he was the most creative, I thought. He was, he was inventing imagery that you might see in Photoshop now, but he, he didn't have Photoshop when there he did no it. So you do it direct, and he had the result immediately. Yeah, yeah. we we did very avant-garde pictures. 
So it wasn't just classic photography. Mm -hmm. Like Avedon was more of a portrait and classic. Mm -hmm. uh, Helmut went his way, as you know. Yes, but, I like Helmut. Yeah, he, he started out, he wasn't like that in the beginning. When I used to work for him in okay. the beginning, he was doing Glamour magazine, which mm -hmm. was, um, I have some great pictures that he did of me that was, which we are going yeah. to show on the Which are nice, podcast. actually, yeah. But Hero was very, very creative with the photography from that side. And very because those days, when they photo shoot, it's not like today you can see the result immediately. Right, they exactly. They needed to reveal in the mm. studio, yeah? He would do things, you know, multiple exposures and special developing and mm -hmm. make... You, you have a cover, you probably show the cover. Yeah, we will show in the editing. That's yes. interesting. Yes. Very... Avant-garde, very avant which was what it was about <laughs> in the late 60s. Or yeah, the 70s. yeah, it was it was a very prolific time to be to be avant-garde, and uh, even the the movie that we are going to show today, because today we also have a movie showing. Oh, the movie is amazing, yeah. It's what do you think about this? Uh, uh, Diana Vreelander, exactly. let me just tell yeah. Diana Vreelander, and she was one of. She put all these models across the world, shooting in these amazing savannas and places with these beautiful, creative designers, and this is. Uh, should be super exciting. Exactly. It was a very creative period. I mean, it was about art, not about fashion itself. Yes, Everything. exactly. And it was, yes, everybody was in full expression of their artistic. It wasn't until we had the, uh, in the turn of the 80s when we had the petrol shortage mm. and we had the crisis. Mm -hmm. Then the whole business changed. Okay. Bef before that, there was a lot of money in the business. So you mm. do everything. Sky like, was the limit. You'd be, the sky was the limit. We had budgets. And they didn't like the picture and they had spent $10,000. They did it again. Oh my God. You know? <laughs> and it was fantastic. And there was, so the photographers could express themselves. And they explore. could explore. They could explore. They weren't. Mm -hmm. the, the, but then when after the crunch the of crisis. the oil crisis, mm. yes. um, everybody lost their budgets and everything became boring like catalog like ah oh, and you just had to get the picture right the first time and it was just like oh, you know and even vogue became like that mm -hmm. it was you could see and then even the photographers didn't want to work anymore less art more sales yeah mm -hmm. it became Business. it became yeah. like catalog yeah and we went into the natural period okay nothing wrong with natural but we went from this very flamboyant period mm -hmm. created, artistic artistic and it took natural, you know, and it was just a little bit boy. I mean, it's nice sometimes, but it just lost its its fun, you it's know. Fun. It, just it was not the same as it was no, before. No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, it leads me to another question. So, those days, today it's very common that you you have amazing models being, uh, you know, uh, booked and paid to do uh, Hollywood movies. It happened, eh? Oh, yeah. Cindy yeah, Crawford yeah. and so many. Mm -hmm. So, and were you, I know you had a, a career in Hollywood. Yeah. I saw the movie a little bit. Uh, a yeah. short. I tried to find the whole movie, but I didn't find it yet. Oh, yeah. It's, it's uh, from the 60s, uh, 70s, yeah? 70s, about 1970. So, how was that moment that you were, you know, uh, engaged from uh, by Hollywood to do a Hollywood movie? And actually, it's a... It was a good movie, yeah, with good actors. A very fun. very big actors. It had Burt Reynolds, who was the number one actor in the world yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. He man. was the highest paid actor, <laughs> and it had and it had Ryan O'Neill, who had just done, finished oh, Love Story. Ryan was also was a, a very, giant, very, very, awesome, very, very yeah. attractive guy. Yeah. And I got to be um, the female the attractive lead. Girl. Uh, you were you were very girl. sweet. I saw you jumping on the f or train. And you fall down and... I, it was a comedy and that was the good thing. I had wanted to do Hollywood, but I wanted to do comedy at that time um, because actually the w way women were portrayed in those days, I found really like uh, tacky, tacky. Mm. Yeah, you know, just uh, big boobs and whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, I understand. So, um, and you were more... I wanted something that... Sweet. If, if the public was going to be influenced by my image that it would be something that I wouldn't that I would portray and feel didn't create harm mm -hmm. to this public mm -hmm. so that was always my main objective with film you mm -hmm. know is that my image 
and portrayal to people was important, mm -hmm. you know. So you can and pass I, I a message, yeah? yeah? Yes, it's one. a message, right. And I turned down several films. I turned down um, um, 007, James Bond. I oh, so you were going to be a Bond girl? I didn't want to be, you know. One, I, what a shame. No, but at that time, she, they were just silly, you know, in the 70s. No, nah, I didn't yeah. want to go to, it was Ursula Andress those days, yeah? Yeah. Oh, the Bond like girls on the oh, 70s didn't have the, the, the importance of the Bond girls they have it uh, today. Right no, after. no, they were just, you know. Oh, just it was not the same. It was okay. not the same, but yeah, and they offered me twice to be in the film. So I can I ask you, like, if you are, you can unveil a little bit, how was to work with Burt Reynolds? Come on. <laughs> we can talk it about it now. I think it's we can funny. talk it now. We got this macho, sexy guy with a mustache and all the girls. And, and the, maybe you know another Mastodon. story. <laughs> <laughs> and people love that. Yeah, yeah just be well, what you felt about um, him. Come on. Uh, I felt that he, he needed a lot of attention. <laughs> He needed a. I can't and imagine. If he didn't get a lot of attention, he would be angry. Yeah. He would be upset, and, and he did get upset with me. Yeah. <laughs> he did because you didn't give him attention. No, not what. Mm. Not the type of attention that he was expecting. Yeah. All right, let's put it like that. Because I know the story already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know the real story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. And that was uh, Ryan O'Neill. Because he was a hunk those days, yeah, I mean, a very attractive man. Yeah. Very attractive. And he was uh, working with you because he, he fell in love by you in the in the in the movie. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. No, he was. And you were like in the train. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to New York. Yeah. Yeah. You were going to yeah, New York. yeah. Yeah. That, he was. He was supposed to be the director in the movie, mm -hmm. and Bert was the actor. Okay. Oh, there was something funny that happened on the film. So in the film, we had to go up on a crane. We had to go up, um, and they had to hold hold the um, basket like we were in a balloon. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we were in a crane, mm -hmm. and then I couldn't remember my lines because there was something tricky about the wording, and I just couldn't get it right. So we're all the way up in the sky and dangling on the end of the crane with you know a hundred people waiting for me to act. <laughs> right. It was crazy. Yeah? Because you know. The, and the you couldn't crew, remember your and lines. And I couldn't remember my lines, and so I started crying. And so Bert said, "Oh, don't worry, it's okay, honey." He thought I was crying because I was scared of the heights. <laughs> And I used that as an excuse. Somehow I got through that thing, and you know. But yeah, then, I mean, did you have your, your, your caravan? You had your oh, caravan yeah. so, and everything. So I was very angry because I was a big star in the modeling world, and I had, you know, everybody and every good benefit a girl could want. So, but on the film, because I was a nobody in the film business, yeah. they would treat me like I was a nobody and I would get so angry because I was working as the female lead and I was working with Bert and Ryan and Tatum O'Neill and so we went on location in the desert and for six weeks we were in the desert and they 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 got a 40-foot trailer for Ryan with his own and one for Bert with his own chef and everything you know so they had total luxury total comfort in the desert. You know, and where, you were like... And they, they got for me like, I forget what they call them, they're these trailers where they have divisions and you get like a cubicle that's like one by one. And I had and with wigs all these and, I had, and I had, you know, all this... Everything. Period. I would bump my knees when I put my stockings <laughs> on. So I was so angry that they put me in this little, you know, thing. Well, it's... it's so I went out and I rented my own trailer. What? And, and drove hey, it. Hey, girl. And drove it on the site. And they they weren't supposed to allow me. You know, they have the unions. Those. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. unions. Yeah. They weren't supposed to let me on the site with my trailer. But I came and I had my own trailer with my own kitchen and everything. And I used to do things like that because they would make me so angry, mm. treating me like that. But, but it was the financial people that did that. They were, you know, wherever they could They're squeezing squeeze. on the, they the they set. Were, yeah, wherever they could birds squeeze. and giving money to the mm. big shots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah, Bert was getting like the biggest pay ever in history. And he's not a very amazing actor, in my opinion. No, but media. he became the number one worldwide 
He's, I know. I, okay. It was well, those days, yeah. Well, uh, a lot of things happens. A lot of things that still yeah. happen in Hollywood, but we don't know, right? We just can imagine. But that's why imagine. I didn't stay in Hollywood because, I mean, Columbia offered me a big contract. They wanted to make me a big star and do this mm -hmm, and do that. Mm -hmm. But um, it was not your thing. It was not because I didn't want to give up control of myself. They, in the end, we negotiated everything. I dealt, tripled the figures, cut all the things in half, and. I said, but I have to have say over the film I'm yeah. going to be in because I didn't want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, as a model, you had more control. Though. Yeah, and they wouldn't let me have that. Mm -hmm. So I said, fine, goodbye, because I was happy modeling. Because modeling, you have a job for the day. You go for and the you go day, home. Yeah. and you go home, and it's over. Yeah, movies is the not like movies, that. Movies. I was six months, months. on this movie. Oh, it was, you know. They were paying well in the in the end. Not so well as I wanted. In fact, I was quite angry about that as well. But um, I, I but managed still, to get still. it up. When I got there, I was so unhappy that my lawyers spoke to their lawyer, and they they increased, it up. Uh, they increased the everything. Yeah, to you know. And then bye bye Hollywood. Yeah. And then bye bye. And then bye bye Hollywood. <laughs> and that actually brings brings. I us never to regret me. it when I look back now. Yeah, you did well. You did well. Mm. Bring us to the next uh, question, which is about. Uh, so we talk about your career mm -hmm. as a model, as mm -hmm. an actress. Now let's talk about your personal life, mm -hmm. because you you had your family those days, yes. and uh, you had a beautiful, and you have a beautiful daughter. Yes. Uh, how did you combine the both roles of being this super mega star and just you know having Fashion. all of this 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 attention and have to work a lot because this is also yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, I was working every day, all yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with uh, the family? The family? I had to how have a, a live-in helper. A live-in helper, yeah. A live-in uh, mm -hmm. helper. So you were able to combine both family and, and work? Yeah, but I don't think that it's very good for the children. Yeah. I don't really think it's good for a mother to work full-time, like, you know. Yeah. When they I are suppose young, yeah, yeah. a couple of days or half days, okay. You yes. need it. You need it for your sanity to get out of the house sometimes. Yeah, and you need some it work, yeah. and to keep your mind. But um, it's it's a shame that it came to the point where women it had to be a income, two people income, mm -hmm. just to support the family, mm -hmm. and that there's been so much pressure on women to have careers that overtake. Um, and there's also this, this, this idea that a uh, woman can do it all. Yeah, because oh, yeah, as we did it, it's, it's, we do it, but it's there's terrible. a compromise Yeah, always. the woman works nine to five and then she goes home and she has to cook and clean and feed a kid and, you know, manage and still be house. sexy for the husband. It's, too, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's just ridiculous. It's too much. It is too much. It is too much. Too much pressure. It is too yeah. much. Now we go to the moment that you have a comeback, yeah? There was a moment that your career started uh, yeah. to slow down mm -hmm. because, you know, there is a pressure in society that, you know, yeah. I'm very lucky being a man. Yeah. But I'm very uh, disturbed because my major patients, the major percentage of patients are a woman. Uh -huh. And they are women with in success with careers. Right, right. This last 18 years, I had yeah. thousands. Yeah. Mm. The pressure on women in society to be beautiful or young is mm. insane. Very, yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Uh, uh, so you had this coming back at 40s with 40s, that that was a beautiful thing. It was amazing. It was incredible. Well, I think my career tailed tailed off at about 35 like that it just like one day I woke up and I said well you know I haven't worked in six months does that mean I'm not a model anymore and so how, was how happened that, uh, that thing yeah, there was a logic yeah in so uh, in Vogue in the, in I the went, cover of Vogue with 40s I went to live in the Alps yeah. after living in London okay. and um, Stephen Mizell mm -hmm. had um, idolized us my era, the models mm -hmm. from my era, like Lauren Hutton, who was a mm -hmm. very big Vogue model, mm -hmm. myself, he had idolized us. He was young, and he was a young photographer, and he used to stand outside the studio of Avedon to wait for us to come out from a Vogue shoot so he could see what we looked like, wow. the makeup and the hair and everything. Okay. Yeah, so he, he had idolized us. So somehow, when um, I was 40, Lauren was 50, and Stephen had become the huge photographer that he is. You know, he did the Madonna book, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he did all the Calvin Klein campaigns. 
um, he decided to, women were fabulous and he wanted to bring back these icons like Lauren and myself. Mm -hmm. And mix them with at, the ones who are already... Uh, yeah, at, at, at this age now, I was 40 and she was 50. Um, wow. He, so he, he brought me back from... I don't know how he found me in the mountains in the Alps. <laughs> you were you were in the. I was in the mountains. You were picking up flowers and taking photos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he brought me to New York and gave me um, an esprit campaign for Susie, to, you know, because she came. The designers were just beginning to come out with, you know, uh, like workwear for women, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and stuff. So. He wanted to use me as a, you know, and he gave me two Vogue covers and an inside editorial. And I'm like coming to New York and I'm seeing Lauren and Dale Hyden and we're like looking up because we'd get on talk shows that people wouldn't want to interview us and so forth because this was quite revolutionary. What are you doing back in the business? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were like wondering what the hell is going on because <laughs> I couldn't imagine why they would want to photograph a 40 year old woman. You know, you I had, see the footage of I was, this 40 year old woman. But we were so brainwashed. Just forget about it, huh? We, we were Just all so beautiful, beautiful. You know, actually, that what? is that cover you are with Linda Evangelist and Claudia Naomi Schiffer, Campbell. Right? Anna, of, uh, you know, you start to come to the podcast interviews. Yeah, just every, as an audience. Yeah. And then one day we, uh, I'm smoking a cigarette outside, and they say, oh, I, I did this, and then, because Indra told me, yeah. Uh, and then, oh, you know, I have this photo, and then I, 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 you just say, oh, this is me, but I was not seeing the others yet. And then I said, oh, this is Claudia Schiffer, this is the name of But there was, there was. And then we, just, we are just in Guru Shambhu, this is a cool place, <laughs> people come for the movie night. And then we had the market, night market, my, not my birthday, the October oh, yeah. night market. And I go to one and I say, Anna, man, this, this one is amazing. Say, what? Say, what? It was, it's what? It's a beautiful, uh, it's it the was cover like, of We all. understand mm -hmm. and it's so un amazing how people just see outside. And then they start to go to see inside because there is a lot of flashy lights, yeah? And uh, I think this is very... I think I would be judgmental of this uh, way of living, yeah? Seeing from the outside and not trying to experiment the person from the inner guts. And we prejudge before we... Before uh, you knew. Yeah, you know, yeah. He didn't so, know who I was. Yeah, had some but I, wa I, was, I was immediately because Indra was here. And Indra, was, I know her for six years. Mm. And so I'm not outside many years because it's my inner I do work with energy. Yeah. So, the, the, the beauty is that you bring all this world mm -hmm. and it's so alive in you. Oh, it is. It is amazing. It is. And Very let, alive. Let me just add that this specific cover that we are talking about, Vogue, celebrating mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. uh, not just celebrated models, also celebrated all these kinds of personalities. We had like Isabella Rossellina, Sofia mm -hmm. Coppola and Jane Hitchcock, of course. So this is a very big statement, as you were explaining, that celebrate women, you know, at these all different generations and all different fields from arts and cinema. So I think it was really... Why do you think in the 90s they, they, they press into this agenda of bringing women with, uh, with, us, with power? Power in the sense of we know what we want, yeah? We are older, we are this, we are that, but we are alive. We are kicking. Well, in the it, 90s, something happened there. Why they wanted to Well, it to was revive. a very small moment. Steve, okay. Stephen tried to create that moment and push it, but the advertising industry didn't, didn't believe. Mm. They didn't, even though the demographics of the Same. age, you know, the 60% is more than is older yes, than 50 course, or whatever, more, yeah. um, the advertising agencies weren't ready mm -hmm. to go there. And so it's sort of doodle. Mm. But it was, um, I did do um, a commercial for Maybelline for older makeup. Mm -hmm. There was, it, I think you probably saw yes. it, ask yes. her age. Um, and there mm -hmm. was a few of us older models and they started to do an older range. And, I, and then the L'Oreal came up with a campaign, a worldwide campaign that they were considering me for. Um, but my girlfriend, Dale Hyden, got the campaign. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, 
She's a brunette, so I think she's better suited because it's worldwide. Okay, okay. Maybe, it's maybe you know. Yeah, because sometimes it's not. It's just the the audience that yeah. is. They want to, to reach more people. For the, yeah, okay. for the. So the brunettes they reach more audience than the blondes. Yes. Ah, I didn't know that. Well, you know, <laughs> you've got all of you've got all of South America. Of okay, of you course. Know, you've got the India, Europe, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 You know, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. Blondes are not the. I, and the Calvin Klein he gave an interview in CNN and he Talking wanted. Uh, yes, tell well, me about that. Well, one. when I was in New York, um, Stephen got Calvin to use us, me, Lauren, Dale Haddon, mm -hmm. um, some of the older girls, in his show, mm -hmm. in his runway. And I did the runway, and then you see on the video Calvin perfect saying she's for what I'm perfect to say. for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. so and then I found out later that he wanted age. to give me a contract, but my agent must have screwed up and didn't want me to have it because yeah. they they didn't really believe in the older model thing and they they didn't want it in their agency so you still you syntax still they have this agenda she's a young girls and finish for mm. the modeling well they have certain divisions yeah, okay now you know yeah, so you have now the it's older a little ones bit but still it's based on the young yes, girl of course, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, mm -hmm. it's based on the young girl. Which is, which is uh, completely unfair because if we are alive, we get old. <laughs> That's what happens to people. Yeah. Now, Jane, let's talk about Bali. Okay. What brought you to Bali? Why did you decide to come here and uh, start your, your life here? Oh, what happened? Well, um, <laughs> I had a friend that kept going around the world and who lived in Bali. He was a manufacturer of clothes and um, he stopped. I had lived in New York and then London and then the Alps, the south of France, mm -hmm. Italy, and I was retired and he came by the Alps and visited us and said, um, why don't you come to Bali? And I thought, why not? Yeah, yeah I, I had enough of Europe. I had been in France, I had been in Switzerland, Switzerland yeah. and, and England for many, many years, yeah. and I was ready for something new, so I, I said, let's go. And you like it? And, and I love here. it. Yeah, that never, was how long ago? 20 years ago. Wow. Okay. I've never regretted it. <laughs> no. This is a good life. Yeah, indeed. it's Very a good, good life. Yeah. Indeed. So, uh, we are almost finishing. Okay. Almost. <laughs> uh, how, this is an incredible life. Because this story you are telling, there's a lot of stories that we are going to feel the editing of this podcast. We have so many movies and... It's going to be an easy editing. So, very easy, yeah. Very easy. Who is going to do it, me or you? Me. Yeah, you see? <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, can you give uh, your honest perspective about the world of fashion and fame and they, how they connect? Because many people say it's fake. Many people say that in our days, I'm not speaking about your days. Oh. Some models, they they suffer a lot. They make mm. a lot of money, much more than before. We are talking about millions. Oh, know, I know, yeah. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, if you did the money they do now, oh, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're not here doing that. <laughs> they yeah. did that. It can, oh, you can speak with my it, agent. <laughs> it can still happen. It can still happen. You never know because um, yeah. the mother of Elon Musk yes. yeah. just She's got a she was a model, yeah. She, she is a model and she got a beauty contract with Cover Girl and she's 70 years old. That's beautiful. Wow, that's and amazing. that's a lot of money. But maybe it's because she is the mother of Ellen yeah, Maybe, yeah. maybe. There's a yeah, no, maybe. A strong maybe. No, but she she's very beautiful. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, she yeah. was a very strong model. Mm. Okay. And she was really in her category. She was mm -hmm. very strong. So we, we did hear. Uh, uh, Photo shooting with a girl for the bikini brand that we also sell in the e-commerce page of Gucci uh -huh. and she's diabetic. Oh yeah. And so she has oh, the patch of the patch. diabetes insulin, oh, and we yeah. left it there by purpose. Good. I think more and more. Yeah. If you are doing fat, and she's a beautiful girl, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, we were speaking about oh we need to do a photo sh uh, Photoshop. Is it? No, no. We, we leave it. it. Yeah. And I think more and more we should allow if you are older fat or this or that beauty doesn't come by a very strict yeah. standard in my you opinion you cannot do photoshop 
on you, meaning you can do Photoshop, but you cannot do Photoshop on you. On yourself, on meaning yourself. The well, you're coming you, fake, you understand what I'm saying? A woman's not really beautiful if her insides are not beautiful. Yeah, yeah true. that's the thing, yeah. That's the truth. I mean, you can see a woman even that you may not consider beautiful, but if she has that inner radiance, you, you, yeah, you'll, you just, you'll just be mesmerized and want to yeah. be next to her. Yes. So it's not really... Uh, the inner. outside, it's, it's the inner really, side. It's the inside. inside. It's what the Chinese call Shen, the Shen. soul. Yeah. The soul. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. it always goes back in and brings me to the last question of today. Okay. And I, I particularly like this, this question, it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So what would this Jane from now tell to the younger Jane mm -hmm. as a piece of advice if she could? What would you tell to your younger Jane? Actually, I couldn't think of anything to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You would say, go on, baby. Uh, I, I <laughs> Shake think, your ass. I, <laughs> I did it okay. You, you know? did it okay. Yeah. <laughs> no regrets. No regrets. Wow. No. So that's, that's, uh, that's, a way, that's a way of uh, wrapping up. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful podcast we went in a, in a very beautiful manner through your youth until our days uh, do you envision a good future ahead yes I do I do absolutely every morning yeah. I see Lux and, and you are going to do a catwalk today so I... we are still on my yes, god we are. we are we are on fire so we are going to close I'm going to thank you Marco <laughs> your name your name please Alicia and Henny, 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 Cynthia, Alberto. Your name? Sorry, Veronique. Veronique. There, lady. Your name? Ashley. Serena, the lovely daughter of Jane. Patricia, Simonetta, Luca. Thank you, Thank you so much. much.